All right, guys, so we caught these in the span of like two minutes of electrofishing. And Rick, I want to quickly point out, this fish is fine. We'll put him back in the water, he'll be fine. The electrofishing does not kill them, it only gives them a temporary stun. Now, you can see he's built to live on the bottom, no doubt. Yeah, they, they almost walk with these fins more than swimming. And you say no swim bladder? Nope, no swim bladder. They stay on the bottom. And they change colors quite a bit. Is it, that's okay, you can let them go. We got another one in the bucket. Oh, good catch. You can see you're the biologist there. But they change colors with the light as well, just like any other fish. So you'll get some darker colors, some greener ones, some browner ones, uh, you know, along their body. But if you're trying to tie streamer flies, uh, that's the fish you want to look at. And obviously great big heads on them. They look kind of goby-like. If you've ever been to Alaska or someplace like that, they look very similar to lingcod or rockfish. Almost like a tadpole sort of. Yeah, or a tadpole, very simple design. High in protein, uh, something very good for uh, for your fish to eat as well. Um, and, and John's saying that a couple key things here about this particular area. One, there's basically one of these under the majority of the good cobbles. The cobbles that are in the right depth and in the right place has one of these underneath it. So it's obviously a dense food source and they are eating uh, bugs, basically, right? Midges, things like that. So they're competing with trout in that regard, but they're ultimately a great food source for the trout. Cool little fish, no doubt about that. And lots of them in the river. Now, you're telling us that a, that a big part of that, the reason there's so many of these in the river is the substrate of this river. And we talked about it some while we were drifting, but you're focused on rowing the boat, which I appreciate. The substrate of this river, give us a 30 second rundown of why that's so important. Well, the, the riffles uh, from, from the Blue River Confluence on down, the riffles in the Colorado are really healthy, and we'd like to keep them that way. The cobble does not have fine sediment filling in the spaces in between it and underneath it. You can dig down, you know, over a foot into the riverbed here and still find bugs down into the cobble. You know, and that's not the case in, in some rivers where we have embedded riffles, where it looks like a good riffle, but if you really look at the spaces in between the cobble, they're full of fine sediment. So that's key. So one of the snaggier places, riffles that you can fish is probably gonna be a good place to catch fish for starters. Uh, and some of that has to do with current flow in here, I would think, right? Lots of water flow. Yeah, yep. Good, Lots. healthy peak runoff flows that keep that channel. Now hold that guy real still. Look how little that guy is, guys. So we've seen them in, in just a couple of minutes of sampling them from six inches long to, what's that, an inch, inch and a quarter, something yeah. like that. Uh, what's their lifespan, you have any idea? They're, you know, it, it's about the same as a trout. You know, oh, they really? might live six years, but oh, they, really? just, they just don't grow. No. You know, this is probably last year's fish, I bet. You know, right. One year old or... Sure, huh, cool little fish. Uh, yeah, we like all fish in this in, the, in in this show, and so these are pretty neat ones right.